Thank you. It was a good idea, Kenneth. Well, when, he, when he spoke praise to me, that those songs, are, that's the way I praise. Yeah, well, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful. So praise. What is praise? What is praise? So we often think the praise is, is, oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. Oh, hello, you've been on my mind. Look who showed up in the back there, Edwin. <laughs> Yay. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. What is praise? Edwin is so good. Jen is so good. Jeff is so good. You know, that, that seems like that is praise. Ah, oh, but praise is what we focus on the most. We, we if, if you're a Facebook person, what do you talk about the most on Facebook? And, and so to look at that and realize, oh, that's what I'm praising. And pra praising is another form of prayer. Uh, uh, some call it, they say it's synonymous with prayer. Because uh, it's, it, it's affirming, what I praise, I affirm as active and present for good in my life. And so, the thing is, if my main form of praise is criticism, mm. that's what I bless and multiply. Mm. If, I, if I speak most of what I fear, that's what I'm praising and multiplying. If I speak of love, then that's what I'm praising and multiplying. If I'm speaking of hate, that's what I'm praising and multiplying. And, and it can be a bear because we can get into a habit and we can begin to forget. And our... I have a friend whose... Uh, his dissatisfaction and his unhappiness with life seems to be more important to him than anything else. How do I know? Because that's what he talks about the most. And even if I remind him, make a gratitude list. Find what you are grateful for today. Well, yes, but what she said to me the other day. I said, so she said it. She was mad at you. Why wouldn't she be mad at you? Look what you did. You're going to keep making her mad? <laughs> you know? Wake up, find a God that works for you, but find a God that is of love. Find a God that is of intelligence, presence. Mm -hmm. Find a God that is always on your side 100% of the time, and if you really want to go to new heights, find a God that's 100% on the side of your enemies 100% of the time. What's squeaking? Do we know? Do we have a bird up in the ceiling? I think it's a chair. Oh, okay, good. Even better. Better than a bird up in the ceiling is a squeaky chair. Doesn't always get the grease. <laughs> anyway, so, so find a God. There's always on your side. Now, that's it. Even on your, what you are, we would call your enemy side. Because it is my belief that God is on every one side, what God is. But I think we need to get a more expanded understanding of our God. We have to get, understand that within love, the best can happen and the worst can happen. But in my acceptance of love, I can begin to see things correctly. I can begin to see things in truth and in wisdom so that I don't have to hate it. So that I don't have to start hating myself or my life or wonder what's wrong with me. See, so what a lot of us don't understand because we haven't dug far enough. If I look out on the street and I say, oh, that bad thing happened. What I'm seeing is, I think I'm bad. Because how could I see bad if I weren't bad? How could I know what bad is? I wouldn't even be aware of it if I didn't I somehow identify with it. 
And I really invite you to look into this this week if you don't already agree with, agree with me and understand. <clears throat> to begin to look at it really, how, how could that be wonderful? Unless I also thought I was wonderful. It's, I'm the one calling it the name. I'm the one identifying it as good or bad or whatever. How can it be other than what I am when it's me who's saying it? It's not somebody on the, on the mount who's calling this good or bad. It's not somebody in the house next door. It's not somebody else. I am the one identifying everything as I see it, based on my current understanding or my current willingness to understand it this way. And so I, if, I, if I don't like how I see it, I need to wake up and realize, oh, I, th I think that's what I am. Because how could I see things other than as I see myself? So I grew, I grew up in a volatile household. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, so I went to school ashamed that if anybody found out where I came from, because I, I dressed really well as a kid, so I could mask it. I could mask how I uh, thought we were. But I lived with people who clearly thought they were bad and didn't think they could get beyond it. And, uh, uh, but they talked about it all the time and multiplied it and multiplied it. And that's why in this day and age, I, uh, I really don't like talking. talking. And I, I catch myself in it, uh, gossiping or criticism and stuff. But at a certain point, I want to cut it off. And I realize I don't want to bring those people into my house. There's some people I don't play on the television because I don't want that, that voice reverberating to me. I don't play them on the news. I don't play them wherever because I don't want my thoughts about that reverberating because what I think that one is is what I think I am in one form or another and to a deg one degree or another. That is my praise. And that's what we have to understand. I, want, let, I, I need to start praising what I want to see active and present in my mind and in my life. And so if I am praising lack over here, I'm likely to experience lack right here in my pocket. I'm likely to experience lack in my friendships. I'm likely to experience lack in my, my basic relationships. And I don't want to do that anymore because I was taught... I think there's a bird in the ceiling. Uh, I, uh, I'm distracted. I, I have distraction. Yeah, you know what's cool right now? Is I don't believe I'm under attack by a bird. That's probably, it wouldn't be the first time a bird has ever gotten in here. Oh. <laughs> Do you think, oh, you think it's a chair? Okay, I thought I heard a louder chirping. Whatever. I'm not under attack by this the way I would have been at one time. You see, I went through life under attack. Anybody? Anybody? You know, you woke up in the morning and there was something out to get you. It could be a bug. <laughs> it could be a person. It could be whatever. But it was all in your mind. And then, uh, yeah. You get in the shower or whatever, and there's a spiker in the tub, and there's a whatever. And, and, and then you're going to get leave the house. For all those people who are thinking about you, the people on the highway who are thinking about you, the people at the grocery store who are thinking about you, the people at work who are thinking about you, because you know they are. They're thinking about what you wear. They're thinking about your childhood. They're thinking about where you came from. <laughs> They're thinking about how much money you don't have. They're thinking about your parents. <laughs> they're just, th th you know, they're thinking about you. <sighs> a 
And then one day you wake up and find out it's not true. <laughs> and you realize, oh, they weren't thinking about me. And then you got to deal with that disappointment. <laughs> nobody ever thinks about me. <laughs> uh, nobody loves me. I am so unloved, nobody's thinking about me. What is praise? <laughs> what is praise? Listen to this. It comes from the book of Luke, chapter 3 of the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. The most helpful way for you to view yourself is not to view yourself as special. Now, do you understand what it means to view yourself as special? To view yourself as special is that you need to tell everybody everything you like and everything you hate. Everything you love about this show and everything you hate about this TV show. What kind of foods? You know, it comes up, somebody says, this is a big good one for me. Oh, somebody says to me, I love beans. Really, I hate beans. Well, I just changed the subject, didn't I? We were talking about your love of beans and I changed it to my hate of beans. That's not very kind, is it? Mm. And both is a form of praise. Mm. Except one manifests more of something somebody likes, like beans. And the other gets me invited to a dinner party where they're serving beans. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, but, but, it, but it's that, that thing, the specialness. Oh, I have this ache in my back, really. Oh, I got an ache in my shoulders. Oh, I, oh, oh, I've taken this medicine for it. Really, what kind of medicine is that? Because I've been taking this medicine for this, and I've been, because I have a pain here, my foot hurts, and my heels hurt, and my this hurts, and that hurts, and my bra brain hurts. And so, and all that is is specialness. That's us claiming specialness, and not for something really be, that we consider productive in our lives. It is a specialness. Look at me how sick I am. Look how special I am. I'm sick. You don't understand. I am sick. Okay. <laughs> you go. Rock on. And we're embarrassed to say I love God. I just love God because we're getting afraid that people will, will look at, uh, we get afraid to invite people to our church because they're going to think we're one of those kind of people that we think about somebody else who would invite us to their church. Uh, I admire people who aren't afraid of their church. I so admire people who aren't embarrassed by their God. I really do. Uh, and, I, and I like to sit down and visit with some of those people. They don't have to come here. Anybody that thinks they have a God that is good and is love, and their families are happier because of their beliefs. And I don't hear anything in the conversation that wants to hurt somebody else or wants to apologize nor convert me. They just love their God. I mean, years ago, I, went, uh, I, w I had dinner with a woman <clears throat> named Deborah. Uh, she used to be on Dallas. She played Bobby's secretary. But she and I went out to dinner. She was doing a club act where I worked. And... We went to dinner, and she was telling me about growing up as a Catholic. To me, it sounded just like she grew up in unity. The whole conversation. I couldn't tell the difference between her God and mine. I just heard love. I heard family. I heard togetherness. I didn't hear any of that prejudice about Catholicism. I didn't hear any of those, those things a lot of people say. So it tells me it's not the religion. That is the problem. It's how people practice it. That's the problem. I've met a lot of abusers in, in Unity. That you think, hey, you go to Unity? <laughs> I didn't hear any of those passages in the Fillmore books that I read. Mm -hmm. I never heard about shame. I never heard about guilt and Unity. And yet, I'm still <laughs> hearing that I should be ashamed and guilty uh, by some, some, some ministers. It's because... A lot of us, we bring our childhood stuff into our spirituality and we forget to leave it behind, what, what's no longer working. So anyway, the most helpful way for you to view yourself is not to view yourself as special. The ego wants to see itself as special. Special is separate. So to surrender to the ego's desire is to continue to see yourself as separate from God. This is not helpful, the Spirit tells us. 
Oh, I love this. Do not look at Jesus' baptism and see him as special in comparison to you or others. Look at his baptism and realize Jesus was baptized with others and the same as others. In the same water and by the same one, for Jesus was baptized as one Son of God. It was of this one Son that it was spoken, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. These are words spoken of you. Not just him, you, and you, and you. These are words spoken of all of us. Read these words, listen to them, take them into your heart. Accept them as true of you, as they were true of Jesus, for there is no difference of any kind. Rejoice that you are not special. And, and that Jesus was not special. Let me read that whole thing in one sentence. Rejoice that you are not special, and that Jesus was not special. For it is all the same. You are he, he is you. You are the one Son of God. This is your truth. You are the Son of God, just as Jesus was. There is no difference among you. So when people ask me about unity, well, do you have Jesus? And I say, yes. And he is not a deity to us. He is no more the Son of God than you or I are, or is. Is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you and me. <laughs> he is no, no different. From what we read of Jesus, he really took to this thing. He really found a place that he felt secure in, in his understanding, in his prayer life. Any one of us could do that. I've done it. I have found the sweet spot in my spiritual life that gives me confidence to remember more often than I forget. To realize that anything I praise is not because it's special. It's because it's natural. Love is natural. Love should not be the exception. I love when someone, oh, but they're a good person. That should not be the exception of our humanity, that they're a good person. That's the norm. Just not everybody's awake to it. We're all good person. That was why I came back to unity a second time. I had the realization, I am good. In God, I am good, capital G, no opposite, and cannot not be good. What I praise is the good rather than Sean. I don't have to praise me. I appreciate me, don't get me wrong. I marvel all the time at the things that have taken place because I have said yes to them. Mm -hmm. And so much of my life has taken place because I said yes. I suggest we all do it more frequently. Say yes to your good, even if you, if, even when you don't know how it's going to come about. Who here has done a few things in your life as a kid? There's no way you could have predicted. I was going to say thank you. First off, so one person. <laughs> Oh, what? What was that? <laughs> well, it is, but not everybody's aware of it. But at first, only one hand went up <laughs> when I asked. I, I, I marvel every day of my life that I can sing. I marvel every day of my life that I've been to Europe, and I'm going again in October. As a kid, it, it was a big deal if we went to Atlantic City. I mean, that, that was a really big deal for my family. That's where we went. And it was fun. My grandparents would take us. My mother, when she was a little girl, danced at the steel pier. You know, it was, she was a tap dancer. That, that, that was my family. And uh, there was nothing bad about that or wrong about that. But the thoughts that went, Europe, that, that was crazy. I remember when my grandparents in their late 60s went to Florida. That was a big deal. That they took that risk. And they went down there to be with friends and, and to see that kind of stuff. I mean, you guys are going to Ireland this way. I've never been to Ireland. And I, and I think, oh, I don't know if I'll ever get to, but I hope I do because it seems like a fun thing to do. Kenneth, Kenneth's been, and he likes it a lot. And maybe others of you have been to Ireland. I have not. We're going to Florence for two weeks in October. And with friends. Imagine, I have friends. I didn't know I'd have friends. <laughs> When, when I was young. And so, often we, we, we praise the people who are nice to us, and we condemn the people who are not. Or should I say nice when I say the people who agree with us. 
And that's not why you go to church, really, to find people who agree, like-minded individuals, people who agree with you. And if somebody walks in who doesn't agree with us, what's wrong with that person? What the heck? We don't need people here who don't agree. Who, let, me get, let me get this wrong. Right. Let me say this the correct way. Not everybody who comes here has to agree with us. But if you're going to stick around, it's wise to stay open rather than fighting it. Rather than fighting what it is we, we teach here. Because we're not here in a debate club. We're not here to prove why you should agree with us. I had have to wonder if, why somebody would come here repeatedly disagreeing. And it tells me oh, they disagree everywhere they go. And we're just the, the, the ones who haven't said, why are you here? And other people, other places said, why are you here? And they left and, and came here finally. Because unity seems like one of those places I can go and be my horrible self and get away with it. Oh, unity's so easy. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to claim Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You don't have to... You can just come here, come here and they just be so happy. Everybody's so nice. Everything. And then they stick around for a little while and realize, oh, to really get into the kingdom, I have to change my mind. I have to transform my thinking. If I want to manifest by the law of mind action... I'm going to have to participate and realize thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And that's why I look into the praising thing. What am I praising? What am I calling good? And what am I calling bad? I don't need to be guilty for what I call bad, but I need to look at it because I'm manifesting more of that too. So often we get fuzzy results, fuzzy manifestations. Because we, we go into a plan with mixed thoughts about it. We go in with both, I can and I can't. We are affirming both at the same time, I can and I can't. I can manifest this great life and I can't manifest this great life. I can, but I can't. <laughs> and, and we go, and we, uh, they told me I could manifest. You can. Look at all that's been manifested in this world. Are you the exception to what can be manifested in the world? How silly. What a silly thought. Except if you hold the thought. Well, yes, of course I can, but I can't. You know, and, and so we take fuzzy actions. It's like, yes, I can read from the book of Luke. Let me open it up to the book of Revelation and wonder why I can't get the riches of the book of Luke. But Revelation is nice, but why can't I get to the book of Luke? Because I haven't opened the page to Luke. The old three stooges. I can't see, I can't see. Why not? I've got my eyes closed. <laughs> Larry. Oh, Larry. <laughs> it's like, well, open your eyes. <laughs> well, when I open my eyes, you do this. <laughs> Last week, I, I, you know, uh, often you hear Radio sit here talk about, she likes to come up here and say, hi, God. And people wonder what the heck she's talking about. <laughs> I, I've taught this for many years. I taught it in classes back in my early days in New York, when I, my early days of ministry. Uh, and I talked about this in Unity of New York last week in church, that high God thing. It's a form of praise is what it is. That when I get up in the mirror and I look in the, mirror, in the morning and I look in the mirror and I say, hi God, what I'm acknowledging is my God self, which is a form of prayer, it's a form of praise. It's a, it's a form of my oneness, not my specialness, but my oneness, because you see, if I'm looking in the mirror and I say, hi God, I'm not finding flaws. I'm not finding what's wrong with me, and finding what's wrong with me is part of me, my specialness. The specialness that is of no good use to me. But if I look in the mirror, hi God, and, and all I can see is a God being. 
I, I'm not fretting about the hair. I'm not fretting about the skin. I'm not fretting about the eyesight. I'm not fretting about anything. I'm not. I, nor am I glorifying in this beauty that is before you now. I am a just a. My God. I'm acknowledging my oneness. I really recommend this. Oh, she's got a high God affirmation there. I, I recommend this as a practice. Because you see, as I do high God here, then I look at you and I say, hi God. And I'm just seeing our oneness. I'm not seeing Jen's personality. I'm not seeing how we're the same or different. I'm just seeing, oh, God being, God being, God being, God being, hi God, hi God. Hi God, hi God, hi God, hi God, hi God. And, and now, now, now we're just one. There's nothing special about us. And that frightens some of us because we like our specialness, but we'll do so much better becoming no thing. Become God beings. So now when Reyesa comes up here and says, hi God, you'll know what she's talking about and it'll, hopefully it'll, it'll make a little different because you'll be doing it. You'll be doing it in your daily practice. I will not be calling you later to see if you're practicing it. Uh, that's your business, but I hope you will. That high God thing, I don't know how I had that revelation years ago. I just remember looking in the mirror and saying, hi God. And all I could do was smile. There was nothing to criticize. There was nothing to praise beyond, oh, I'm a God being. They call me Sean, but I'm a God being. And I knew it was true. I knew it was absolutely true. There was nothing to accept or reject. There was to be with it. And so, let your praise be in your acknowledgement of oneness rather than your differences, rather than in your separation. Let your praise be not for what we do, but be that we are. All the manifestations, they're going to come if we just stop affirming that they won't. All the manifestations, they will come, they will just keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. What's important is that I know what to think about them and say about them and do it with them, and that's who my high God that's through my oneness, my unity, as it were. My, that we are all one. And none of us are more or less than each other. Some have more stuff. Some have less stuff. You know, the more stuff are not enviable and the less than are not poor, poor things. They, no, let's, let's, uh, let's stop making ourselves and each other special. But really, begin to acknowledge our our oneness, through our praise. God itself does not need our praise. God will not look down upon us with more benevolent eyes and personality. If I, if I keep saying, thank you God, thank you God, oh God, you are so wonderful. Now I do a lot of thank you God, don't get me wrong, but I don't do it to get something. I give a lot of praise, thank you, thank you, thank you, because I have a lot of something. But the high God, now who sees there nothing? Thank you.